Hi guys, if you're considering doing a closet makeover, a refurbishment, overhaul, whatever you want to call it, I've just done mine. I started with a really long narrow space with some really gr grotty carpet, some fluorescent overhead lighting, some yellow tones, it really was not pretty. Everything was a mess. I'm gonna show you the before and afters. I'm gonna show you the whole process. So I kind of want gonna talk through my pros, cons, the necessities and must-haves versus the wants, um, why I chose certain things, why I kind of forego certain things, um, what else, um, the whole design process, how long it took. I'm gonna answer all your questions in the comments below. And I'm gonna start at the beginning, but before I kind of share with you a few of the things I was considering during the design phase. So a few of the things I had that kind of were my starting point for my closet design where I really wanted a shoe shrine. I wanted that to be the focal point as soon as you walked in. I wanted the strip lighting or overhead accent lighting. I will get to that in a little bit. I wanted to utilize all of the space. Floor to ceiling because it is a small space. So I wanted to maximize it and go all the way up to the top. I wanted to have some glass cabinets up the top to be able to kind of display things. And then I wanted some closed cabinets to hide all of the mess. Because I'm always shooting a ton of content and I like to have my outfits picked out to see what I'm gonna wear, put everything together and then put it away as I go so I know where I'm up to. I had them in store valet rods so I can hook everything on here that I want to shoot. And then when I'm done with it, it's really good for packing as well. If you want to hang out outfits that you're going to pack. And then as soon as I'm done, I can put them away. And then that slides back in. And I had two of these installed. I also knew I wanted a sunglasses drawer to keep those organized. I have loads of sunglasses. I wanted kind of display shelves to put bags on and hats. I needed space for hats. My husband has a ton of shoes, so he needed shoe storage. He actually has more than I do. Um, what else? And then I'm gonna, so that was from my perspective. So definitely the closed cabinet so I could hide stuff. Floor to ceiling to make the most space out of everything. Glass cabinets as kind of display features. And then the shoe shrine that lights up as soon as you walked in. I wanted really nice kind of like fake hardwood or real hardwood floors that were in a light color. And I wanted some really cool lighting so I could film in here. This is what the designer did for me as well that came from a designer's viewpoint and some questions you should ask the designer as well. So one of the reasons we chose California Closets to do our closet overhaul was they spent the most time with us, they understood the design. She came in and counted how many of each clothing we have. Now to be fair, it wasn't quite exact because I only do two seasons at a time. So I have our full winter right now and I'll swap it to spring summer she also counted all of our shoes to make sure we had enough shoe storage and the boots so we made sure that we had enough cabinet space to accommodate all of the boots as well as well as hats so they're kind of things you really want to consider when working with your designer is if they're not doing that for you what do you need to make this actually usable space so as you can see we are really maximizing this really long narrow space. Another thing you're gonna to want to consider is it's all well and good having floor to ceiling space, but how are you gonna get up in those top cupboards? So I have to use a step ladder to get to the top cupboards, which isn't the most practical solution, but if you're not gonna use those cupboards every day, it works. So those spaces right at the top are for things that my husband and I rarely use, whether that's beach hats, pillows for the plane, um, display bags, you know, so I kind of can put some of my off-season bags at the top that I'm gonna be using, or jewelry that I don't use all of the time, and then the stuff that I need to reach all the time is on these racks. Now, she measured how tall I am to make sure that I was able to reach my pieces because it's all well and good maximizing space but if you can't reach your clothes it's pretty pointless so definitely things to consider make sure she measured how high my arm reach was so make sure your designer is taking that into consideration so the types of clothes you have kind of how many tops you need space for how many blazers how many gowns I have a special section just for my gowns because we measured the length of the longest ones and made sure they could hang in there because I was hanging them in a separate closet, which wasn't really, you know, practical. So now everything is in one space. So definitely measure your longest clothes, how many t-shirts, how many dresses, 
What do you actually need space for? Because that way you can make the most out of the space. How many heels do you have versus flats versus boots? Because they're all going to be different shelf heights. So the flats going to be in a really narrow space. The boots are going to need a longer, taller shelf space. So just things like that to consider. One of the main things you're going to want to consider is the cabinets, whether you're going to do a flat, whether you're going to do a shaker, there's kind of loads of different widths of these, what color you're going to do. So we went for white because I like really bright, light, airy things and using a small space, just doing dark colors would make close this in and make it really dark. Also for filming in here, I wanted it bright and light as well. I went for kind of this shaker rather than doing it flat. I just thought it was more classic. I was worried the flat ones would date and I didn't know if they looked a little cheap. So that's why I chose that. Handles, oh my gosh, there are so many choices of handles. I was going for really sparkly ones to begin with. Then I looked at plain metal ones. Then we came back to the acrylic. Kind of one of the big things I was worried about was fingerprints all over them. I don't want to be cleaning these every single day or looking at fingerprints. So I was actually really impressed with these acrylic ones. I went with silver because everything else in our house is white, silver, greys. That's why I went with it. And then width wise, you have to consider as well. So if you don't go with a handle that provided by your designer in their showroom, they kind of have a fixed width normally that they're used to drilling. So you're going to want to look if it's kind of aftermarket or you're doing it by yourself for one that matches their width. That way, if you ever want to switch them out, it's kind of easy to feel, find an alternative because I feel like the handles, you could go with something really modern, trendy, and then switch it out as trends change. It's something that's really, really easy to replace as long as you do that width. Otherwise, you're going to have holes in the doors and all the wrong things, and you have to replace the whole doors, and it's a whole mess. So definitely consider the handles you want in the design phase. The other thing you're going to want to consider is your lighting. I went for this light fixture because I wanted something really low profile so that it didn't take up too much space. And then it's controlled by remote control so I can make it warmer. If I wanted kind of warmer lighting in here, I can make it cooler. I can put it in night mode. I can make it brighter. It's just one of those really cool light fixtures I found on Amazon. I'll link that below as well. This is the bare empty space we are now working with. Everything is getting ripped out today and including the carpet and the lighting. Obviously, it's a really small, narrow, long space to work with. So we worked really hard with the designers to try and maximize the space in here. And I can't wait for my shoe shrine to go in the middle. So this is where we are up to at the end of day one of the rip out phase. So let's take a look. Okay, so all the shelving is down, all the hooks are off, the baseboards have been pulled, and then he started to patch and repair the walls because apparently they'd stuck the shelving on, so it was a bit of a nightmare to remove everything. Okay, so the process is getting a little bit stressful because we have boxes and bags everywhere. I'm trying to find out what I want to wear for the next couple of weeks. I don't want to pack in boxes in the garage, things I don't want to get destroyed in the garage or that I've kind of like a creased. And then there's all the top shelves I can't even reach to to deal with. But um, it's starting to look really bare in here and like hey, a bomb is gone off and I hate mess. It really stresses me out. So kind of this is where I'm at right now trying to figure out which shoes I want to wear, which ones need putting in boxes, which ones need temperature controlled, which ones I could just throw in the garage. And yeah, it's a bit of a disaster. Okay, so I'm trying to be as organized as possible and trying to plan outfits as much as possible I need for the next two weeks, but it's still a complete disaster. I've got out what I think I need for the next two weeks and then everything else is in boxes in the garage. So wish me luck. Okay, so this is the end of day two of the rip out. The carpet's gone. The walls have all been smoothed down and retextured to make them all smooth and nice for the next lot to go in. Okay, so this is day three of the closet overhaul. So they've retextured the walls. They have painted the walls and they're letting it dry overnight. And the paint smells really, really strong. It's causing major, oh, the light's coming out. Um, major issues in my eyes, they're burning and my poor little cat sneezing his head off. So the underlay is down, the flooring is almost done. I was going to do herringbone, but the space is just too small. So we're just laying it the regular way. And then this is the finished flooring and light fixture. Okay, so now the closet prep is done. California Closets is starting their install today. 
So they've been really good about laying down lots of protective covering and there's lots of tools everywhere. There's two of them working really, really hard to install the built-in closet. So this is phase one on day one and they're cracking on really fast with it. They're being so good about me keep coming in filming and checking the progress, but the cabinets are almost done and so is the base trim. Okay, so this is the end of day one of the install from California Closets. We have most of the base trim in, the top trim in, the cabinets, the rails, the valet rod. There's just a few more things to do. So we have to do the glass in the cabinets at the top and then the drawers at the bottom. And that is pretty much it. Okay, so day two of the closet install with California Closets, and today we are getting the final touches with the drawers and the cabinets. And it's not just me loving this new space, the cats are absolutely loving it too, so they're gonna check it out for me as well. Showing you teasers and little clips of it, this is the finished space. So there's that shoe shrine in the middle that I wanted, glass cabinets for display at the top, plenty of room for my bags, blazers on one side, kind of cocktail dress length stuff on the other. We go to this side, I've got space for my t-shirts, for displaying stuff, a cupboard, two clothes cut in cupboards at the top on my side for throwing stuff and making mess. And then at the bottom, we did a really deep drawer so I could throw in my swimsuits, my bikinis, my cover-ups, everything like that. And then on this side, we kind of did taller shelves so that I could throw in my boots and then narrow shelves so that I had space for my hats and my baseball hats and all that good stuff. And then, like I said, the other cabinet at the top for the stuff you're really going to want to use, just kind of beach hats that I'll use once or twice a year. So that is my side. Then we'll come to my husband. So my husband has less hanging space because he has stuff upstairs as well. So we basically did, again, closed cabinet for him to make mess with, um, shelves for t-shirts, hanging space for t-shirts, shirts, pants, baseball hats there, and then the drawer at the bottom for whatever he wants to throw in there. And then this is kind of his corner for all of his shoes. So a few things we did aftermarket. So after it was done, so these are things you might want to think about before you do. Do you want to do lockable drawers in your closet? We didn't because we prefer to use a safe for our things. I think if someone sees a lock there and it's automatically there, it's more temptation. Apparently the locks aren't that sturdy anyway. So we kind of like didn't bother with the lockable drawers in here because it's mainly just dress jewelry and cheaper stuff anyway. Um, one of the things I did do with them was a sunglasses organizer because I've always wanted those. I think they look really, really cute. So that's something I did with part of the design. What it looks like. So you can kind of like, it's just really clean, organized. And then for the sunglasses cases, if you're wondering where I stored those, I'm hiding them behind there. So they're easy just to grab. And go. So the other drawers aren't quite as organized, but I've just started doing those. I did a jewelry organizer just for kind of like dress jewelry. Last minute, I found them on Amazon. I might get a couple more, but it was just an easy way of doing it aftermarket. And then some other just knickknacks at the bottom, nicely hidden. I have all of my leggings in one drawer, just kind of the workout leggings, not kind of the more dressy leggings. And in the bottom, again, I got these from Amazon. So I kind of have all my belts in here, all my headscarves, my twillies, and then my husband is going to put his belts or ties in here. You could also use this for bras if you were keeping your lingerie in your closet as well. We just keep our, our lingerie separately. My cats love this new space. Okay, I think that's about it. And if you have any questions that I haven't answered, drop them below and either myself or I'll get the designer who did our closet from California Closets to answer the questions for you. It was one of those processes that was kind of it was fun, but it was stressful because you had to move everything out for a couple of weeks whilst they were doing the whole rip out, whilst they were doing the install. And then you have to kind of, we waited because there was issues with the cabinet. So everything was in, out, dusty. And then finding a, but finding a home for everything was really fun because now I know where everything is. Everything has a place. So one of the things in design in the design phase why I was saying to kind of measure everything, count everything, Everything has a home. It's easy to find everything. When I walk in, I'm like, oh, I know where everything is. Before I was like, I don't want to go in a closet. It's just a cluster F. And now I'm just walking in I'm like, okay, I know where my shoes are. I know where my accessories are. I can put everything together. It just feels like such a different space. Like I found my, ah, it's relaxing. It's cool to come in here. I know where all my money is. But um, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe.